Hi, I'm Becca, fifth gen farmer working on the family farm in North Yorkshire. And hi, I'm Lizzie, from a non-farming background, now working as a digital creator for Farmers Weekly. We combined our love for agriculture with our two different shoe types to bring you Boots and Heels. From the office to the field, we speak to farmers, break the stereotypes and ask the questions so you don't have to. So grab a cuppa and join your two northern gals as we learn all about ag. Difference in drinks, classic. Oh, oh. <laughs> Does that make it so weird? Your tummy made the weirdest noise. That wasn't, there, my, that wasn't my stomach. <laughs> that makes me gulping. Can you not make that noise? I'm gonna. Oh, that's going in bloopers. That is going in bloopers. Lizzie here for another live reacts and today we're going to be talking about something a little bit different in agriculture. Yeah absolutely obviously we want to give you guys stuff which is really entertaining to watch and listen to and hopefully this one it's been quite prevalent in social media we want to cover things that are trending and this program isn't something that you'd maybe expect from us. <laughs> so with that in mind Lizzie what are we watching? Has anybody heard of Married at First Sight? I mean, not what you'd expect. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and it is a huge TV program that is trending in all publications at the minute. It's on social media. And it is a show that Channel 4 produced where it sees two strangers meet at the altar, get married and live their lives together. What could go wrong? Except what happens when you put a vegan and a meat eater together? Who knows? We'll see. We'll soon find out. <laughs> so we're just about to watch where the couples are, are introduced to us. I mean, already, if you even forget about really, really different kind of ways of approaching life, it's a massive thing. So for this, we've got Zoe and Jenna. Zoe's a meat eater, Jenna is a vegan, and they are being matched together. So this will be really interesting. It's interesting, like, all the family are just looking for is for her just to find someone. Yeah. I think it's really great as well that this year they've got to LGBTQ plus couples, which is great for diversity. Oh, absolutely. And to be honest, it's it's kind of astounding it's taken this long actually. So it's really, really good. Yes, yeah, so Jenna's basically turned around and said, No, Zoe said, Would you ever would you what if I said would you compromise and eat meat? And she said that's definitely never gonna happen. They've already both established there that there is the no way they're gonna give up give up their diet choices. Yeah. And Zoe said, well, that's the same thing. If you're not going to try and compromise me, why am I going to compromise and vice versa? And Jenna said, well, actually, it's different because there is morals involved. There is morals involved because there's a victim involved. So her choices there are clearly coming through as she is seeing the animals and welfare as she's almost animals attaching... Animals are victims. Em yes, and she's attaching emotion to that. And I find that... Obviously, I farm livestock, and I, if I'm going to be really, really honest, I'm quite offended that she sees the livestock that I put hours and hours into rearing from birth, from, well, from the second they're conceived, mm -hmm. I put hours into ensuring the best possible conditions, the highest welfare... And so for her to say that that animal is a victim, I find really, really tricky. Yes, that animal has a purpose, but is it a victim? For me, a victim has had some wrong done to it. I don't do any wrong to my animals. They are looked after, do you know what? Probably better than myself. Mm -hmm. You know, if we really went down to it, 
I, I don't always stop for a meal. I don't always stop to rest. If that animal wants to stop for a meal, it's always got food. Mm -hmm. If it wants to rest, it always has shelter. I don't afford that luxury to myself. Yeah. And so I find that a really, the, the word victim, I find really, really tricky in that scenario. Now, I wonder if that kind of place that Jenna's coming from is based upon things she's seen in the media or whether it is, you know, um, friendship groups or whether that is different education. There is so much factors playing to this. And I think there are a lot of things out there. We can consume media, we can consume Absolutely. questions, we can watch all of these videos. And I think there is a huge difference between British farming and farming across the globe. Absolutely. And it's the way we kind of consume that. We're that really, we're really proud of our standards here in Britain. Mm -hmm. Very, very proud. And I'd like to know, as you say, um, what, what farms Jenna has seen to think that animals are the victim. I'd be really interested. As we said, our standards with British food production across the board are so, so high. So if Jenna has chosen to be a vegan because she doesn't like the idea of the mistreatment of animals, that's actually a misguided reason for becoming a vegan, in my opinion. Because the treatment of our animals in this country is some of the highest in the world. You know, our standards are really, they're impressive. Mm -hmm. They're impressive and people aspire to British food standards. So again, I find that really, really difficult to listen to if <clears throat> she's effectively implying that our animals are mistreated and therefore it's not fair to produce them for food. From a heels point of view. Yeah. Before I came into agriculture, there were times as a consumer where I may have seen things online or heard things from um, people I knew, which made me consider potentially being a vegetarian, for instance, and actually thinking about the choices I made as a consumer. Yeah. Now I'm in agriculture, I see the complete flip side of that. I see day in, day out, farmers, how passionate they are, how much they care about their animals, the high standards of animal welfare, and that some of these myths, I'm going to say, that, that are out there yeah. are myths, whether that be about the planet, whether that be about, again, livestock and livestock treatment. And I think actually, if we can start having conversations like this, and even if programmes like Married at First Sight bring these conversations about, then perhaps we can kind of do some myth busting. Absolutely, and I would, never say to anybody what they what they should eat but we're also coming from a luxury position of visiting farms I live and work on a farm you visited quite a few now as well even from your heels background not everybody has that luxury yeah. position so we're quite privileged 100%. to be able to talk about this from some of our experiences so I guess as you say being able to showcase this tiny little segment of agriculture and, you know, and veganism and everything on a really short video just to try and, you know... Spark a conversation. Absolutely, and it's important. I From an educated position, we should be free to choose. There should be no yeah. coercion on either party. I feel like Jenna and Zoe's relationship is almost like its own microcosm for what actually goes on in the real world. Yeah. And by the real world, I mean outside of this experiment. So on social media, you will find extreme views left, right and centre. You will find negative comments and you will often find it difficult to find a middle ground and find a platform where we got both go, what is your reasoning? I accept that you make that decision for this, but let's both have the right information, yeah. the correct education and the facts and then make informed decisions. And if you still want to have your diet choices as that, I respect that. Absolutely. And that's where it should be. So, guys, to see what you and the public have been saying, we've gone on Twitter and typed in Maths UK as a, ha Maths UK as a hashtag. And the top post is about Jenna and Zoe. So, should we read this one out from Fifi Scott Six? So, just, it, it's basically questioning it says the matches. So, it says, experts matching a vegan with a meat eater. So basically, well, this is not about matching people, it's a televised blood sport. 
So it's basically... Which is really interesting. So they're, they're saying, pretty much, the experts knew that it's really, really difficult to match people with really, really different dietary choices and then probably perspectives on life, but they're doing it for TV. That's interesting. Which is really interesting, isn't it? Yeah. They think that'll be entertaining to have a vegan and non-vegan. And actually, maybe they're right. Is it too different a perspective? You know, considering mm. a major point of being in, rela in a relationship is often cooking meals together, eating together. Mm. Are they pitting two people against one another? This is true. It's interesting. Here's an idea. Mike, from oh. Steph C. Fran. Here's an idea. Might sound crazy, but why doesn't the vegan just eat vegan food and the meat eater have meat? I mean, to be fair, this is what we would, this is what we would say. But it's the moral ground, isn't it? It's the, it's this, it's not just about food. To Jenna, it is, is her moral standpoint. It is the it's emotion wider. that she is attaching to that. It's, so it's her values. It's absolutely wider than just diet. Yeah. It's for her, I'm going to say this, what she believes to go into animal, produ animal production mm -hmm. that doesn't sit well with her. And actually, if it was as bad as she's kind of making out where animals are victims, yeah. um, where the environment is at stake with livestock production, I appreciate that. But I would genuinely say... There's a misguided element because animals are treated very, very well in this country. Albeit, yes, the end goal is on the whole meat production. Yeah. Um, and actually, British farmers are all aiming towards net zero. The environment is one of our most crucial concerns. So I think it's really, really tricky to mm -hmm. combine all of that. Mm. So, okay, here's one. Kemi makes stuff. Zoe is just being disrespectful. Banter over animal abuse just to, to have a laugh at her wife. Charming. That's really interesting because I... Have we seen any banter over animal abuse? Perhaps we haven't watched that episode. Interesting. Carry on. As a vegan, why can't this vegan girl shut up and stop mentioning her diet choice? She sounds like a morning goat. Hashtag married at first sight UK. And that was from Lisa Lee 28723. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, dot, dot, dot. And she's a vegan. So she's already saying, as a vegan myself. I think that is a very refreshing point of view. Mm. Because she is basically saying, I'm a vegan, I've chosen it, but I just carry on my life without having to mention it all the time. Yeah. And I think that's the same with a lot of opinions your opinion will be taken more seriously if you adopt it and live your life by it. Yeah. You don't have to tell people every step of the way. So I think that's really interesting. Mm. So as you can see, a normal supposed just relaxed evening program has really caused quite a backlash on the theme of veganism. Um, we've seen quite a bit of the process so far. I mean, I'm really interested to see what happens when they live together. I think it sparked such a conversation. We've been able to have this conversation and discuss our points of view from consumer and farmer. agriculture and farmer. And I'm really interested to see what you guys have got to say. I think we both want to know yeah, what you think. Yeah, let us know, please. Because, you know, has Married at First Sight missed the mark? Has it hit the mark by bringing this conversation? Have I missed the mark as a farmer? Where's Lizzie at as a consumer? We really want to know what you guys think. So if you've enjoyed this, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. We'd re really appreciate it here at Boots and Heels.